Hello, welcome to my channel, American Christian in Philippines. My name is Gary. Today I'm going to introduce you to a friend of mine whose name also happens to be Gary. Gary uh, purchased a house about three years ago. Uh, of course, he had to put that in his fiancée's name as a foreigner cannot technically own a house and property in the Philippines. Anyway, he purchased the house for 2 million pesos and spent about 500,000 pesos on renovations. So the house we're going to give you a tour of today, total cost about 2.5 million pesos. So around 45,000 US dollar. So really, really good price and opportunity for you to see what you can get for that cost out here if, if, you, if you look around hard enough. Also, Gary is going to share with you how he is surviving out here in the Philippines on no income. Because when he first came here, he had a job and was traveling back and forth uh, to US and unfortunately he did get laid off so uh, he had established his life out here and doesn't have any desire to go back to US and live so he's had to come up with creative ways to generate an income so he can survive out here in the Philippines until that magical retirement age of 62. Anyway I hope you enjoyed the discussion today and thank you for watching. Enjoy the video. Okay, so we're going to do a little tour of Gary's house. And this is in uh, West Balabag, Valencia. And uh, this is the one you bought in 2020. Correct. For a little yeah. over 2 million. Yep. Maybe another 500,000 with improvements. Give or take, yeah. yeah. And, and you're running your business out of here. And you've got a bunch of these little uh, posters up, right? I do, in several restaurants and even at the uh, immigration office. So. <laughs> Okay, so that's uh, that's what it is. G and R's, Gary and Rias. Correct. Yeah, with a little bit. Yeah, you weren't going to get away now. calling it Gary's. Oh no, <laughs> no, no. It was her idea. I certainly had to include her. So. Okay, so look at this nice big front yard. Very beautiful. Very spacious, huh? It's nice. Yeah. When we moved here. Uh, all of the plants, we did a little uh, gardening by moving everything to, to where we had more room in the middle. Uh, in fact, the mango tree is about the only thing that was originally in that spot. So everybody That's moved. a mango tree? Uh, I believe so, yeah. It hasn't produced yet, but uh, hopefully okay. soon. Give it time. <laughs> okay, got a nice little carport here. Right. How do you like my new bajan? Isn't it nice? It's <laughs> the way to go. Yes, we enjoy it. So. All right. And here's the front entrance up here. Nice little porch. Please, come on in. All right. I'm just going to walk past and look around the back. You've got a little area back here too, huh? Sure. It's a pretty decent sized lot. Thank you. Well, we have a shed. It's a oh, little... okay. Yeah. That's pretty good. Clothes hanging on the line. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like your sign. Being a Christian channel, God bless our home. You know, Gary and me, I said, uh, we might have different viewpoints, but we're good friends. Uh, he's, uh, I wouldn't call you a Christian, <laughs> but I am. But I have many friends that uh, are different beliefs, and you know what? It shouldn't change anything, and it doesn't. In fact, you've got better morals and ethics than a lot of Christians I know. So Thank you. You know, what well, you do. I, I, that's what I shoot for, for sure. Uh, absolutely. So. Yeah. Okay, so here's our living room. And... Wow, this is a big kitchen. This is a, where you eat breakfast, I guess, and it you is. eat your Jimmy yeah. Dean's sausages. Do you, have, do you have your own product for breakfast every day? We do. <laughs> well, I, I, I try and make it balanced, but yeah, this morning I had biscuits and sausage along with some eggs and hash browns, so made for a nice meal. And look at this, it's a huge kitchen. Wow. Yeah. Well, if you look... Uh, the bar that is right here used to be the wall, and this was an outside kitchen. We incorporated mm. this, and our laundry room used to be a hog pen, believe it or not. So mm. every bit of this has changed up. So. Mm. Yeah, really nice. Mm. Okay, let's uh, go this way. Sure. Yeah. Do we get to see where your fiance is hiding? <laughs> yeah, we, she may want you to edit that part out. She's very, she's very shy. I can promise you. So, All right. is it safe to come in with a camera? <laughs> G 
just a look. Yeah. Have a so, look. Okay. All right. <laughs> my, my computer. So. And then the house. Yeah. Hello, Ria. How are you? I'm good. That's good. Beautiful home you have here. Oh, now you've got some AC up here too, that's good. Uh, I wish this, I had some. Only, I only in this room, but yes, we do. Huge <laughs> closet area. Yeah. And that's another bathroom up here? It is, yeah. Okay. Well, we won't go in there. But... Just, just a bathroom like any other. Thank so. you. But yeah. And where's the other bedroom? It's bedrooms. Two uh, bedrooms. These two, I guess. They are, yes. Uh, this, this is our... Her sister and our helper's room, so I don't know what it looks like. Well, we're full find full out. disclosure. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, wow. Okay, strangely enough. Ah, yeah, very I, I, nice. It's... Strangely enough, she keeps it very nice. So. Yeah. Huh. There you yeah, go. Very nice. Actually, huh? Plenty big enough. <laughs> and the other room's the same size? Yeah, same room. Yeah. So, small bed in it as well. Okay, so Gary, how did you end up in the Philippines? Because you're pretty young. I mean, it's not like you came here to retire. And you are, you are living here permanently, right? I am. You pretty I am, much, yeah. this is your place now. Mm -hmm. Well, so. I already worked overseas. Okay. And uh, been Australia, Malaysia, Indonesia, working all around. And I worked with several people who had moved overseas when we got to the different places. Okay. So everybody I talked to, whether it was living now as an American or an Englishman in Malaysia or Indonesia or even the Philippines, had all said, I wish I'd have done it sooner, you ought to come mm -hmm. check it out, you know. So um, I did. I had a look around. My, uh, one of my friends had lived in the Philippines and actually from, lived in Dumaguete for a short time and married a woman from there, so he talked it up a lot. Uh, after hearing that, I visited one time, and that was enough. That was it. I, did I, it. I was sold, yeah. So uh, I went back home. Uh, I <laughs> did come back again for another visit, knowing I was moving here. But after that, I went home, sold everything I had. So, And by the way, I would never recommend anybody else do this. Do not <laughs> take one visit, come back, and sell everything. I, it just worked for me. Right but you really should do more research about it. You know, that, that's just good advice, because uh, I know people that have done exactly that, and it mm -hmm. doesn't always work out the way. It doesn't, right, because there are a lot of little things that people don't think about. They either yeah. see a whole lot of good, or they may see some bad, but they, they may not consider the little things that you do have to look at. Right. So, um, one, oh, is that's the a, noise. <laughs> well, you know what, this is a beautiful thing about living in Valencia, isn't it? It just comes... The rain will just come, and if you don't like the rain, wait around 10 minutes, it'll go. So, there you go. Valencia has its own weather system up here. Yes, it does. So, But I would say to anybody who wanted to move here, the you need to consider anything from hospitalization. The hospitals here may not be up to the standard you're used to. If you have medications, sometimes those are next to impossible to get here, depending on what they are. Um, little things that are really wonderful about it but other things you just need to consider it worked well for me i'll be here till i die so i'll go home okay. for a visit but i love it here okay. can we go back to something you said you you said that your first visit here it did it for you yeah well what was it that did it for you what what was the um the key factor that made you say yeah this is it what, what, what was that well um it was a couple of things but for one, over here, there is a really strong connection with family. If, you, if you've never been, you can't understand. But you know, because yeah. when I'm guessing, like me, you know your wife's mother, father, well, if they're still alive, they're, they're kinfolk, you know their family, and their family's very close-knit. I'm the same, I, every, I know my fiance's family, better than I know my, my I knew my own. The family just wasn't there in the States. But that was a big thing for me. But another thing is it is a beautiful country. It's warm year round. Uh, the cost of living is lower. I didn't I didn't have to work as hard to have a decent life here. So. Uh, uh, you know when you when you did make the decision to come in, could you mind saying how old were you when you moved over here? Forty eight. 48, and that's pretty young, and you, you didn't have any um, retirement benefits or early retirement benefits, you weren't in the military, you got any of those things. Nope. So you came out here really with uh, no income, right, that was coming in each month. Well, no, actually at the time when I came, I was still working offshore, so I did okay. have that. Okay. Okay. So I had an actual, I, I, I would live here, in fact, 
for the first two years of being here, I did not know where the immigration office was. <laughs> because I came in, oh, right. they gave me a stamp at the airport, yeah. and before my time was up, I was going back to work. Right. And then when I got off, I came back to here, and again, I never had to get a, until two years after, when things started getting tough and I got laid off in the oil field, okay. Okay. that's when I found the immigration office for the first time. Uh, so, <laughs> so you actually got laid off then? I, 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 yeah, I did, and then once that happened, I had a few investments, nothing mm -hmm. big, but enough that I thought, well, let's see if I can ride this through. Okay. So that and the little business I've started, put together, is hopefully gonna make it until I'm 62. If it okay. doesn't, well, we'll have to back up and punt. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, exactly. So you, you did have a point then where um, you actually found yourself not getting the kind of money coming in that you expected. Oh, yeah. And you are uh, a long way from retirement. Yeah. And were you a little concerned at that time? Were you thinking, how am I going to survive? I mean, cause you just had your savings. Yes, true. And that yeah. was, that was, and, and you probably looked at your savings and thought, hmm, that's not going to... Not going to make it. <laughs> it, so, it. It will help for sure, but no, it will not let me make it until I'm retired. So it okay. was necessary to find a little something that worked around here. So right. Right. I found a small group of people who, who were looking for something that just couldn't find anywhere else. Biscuits and gravy, who'd have knew, you know? <laughs> I grew up eating it and uh, people love the Jimmy Dean sausage and everybody who'd ever, all my friends, Every now and then I'd bring breakfast or they'd come around and they're okay. like, man, you ought to sell this. And then enough people told me and finally my fiance told me. And so that's what I do. Right. Well, I was, I was about to get into this business and uh, because ultimately you, you, you did need to find some income. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and going back to USA, or, that was never an option, right? Because, uh, I mean, you, you are in, you, you're engaged, right, to be married. I am. And yeah. life's good, you're happy, and there's no way you're going to... Uh, leave the Philippines to go work and, and leave your fiance here and you've never had any thoughts about wanting to take her to America I assume or has that ever come up? Has that ever uh, been a discussion? Not so much I mean to be honest if I moved back over there I would have to get back into that rat right, race right. I would need that much of a better job that I'm ever at home for it's just I like the living I, I, I love my fiance mm. but the the entire picture is why I'm here. So. Right, right. Okay, so not moving um, back to USA, staying here was the only option. So you had to come up with some creative ways to to get some supplemental income here, some money to help you right. survive. And so you, you started, your, you tried a couple of other things first before you got to the, That's the Jimmy true. Deans, yeah. right? Didn't yeah. you? Didn't, Tell me if I'm wrong, but didn't you try a piggery or something? That, I did, I so did. How, what happened with that? Uh, it went well, actually. It wasn't a huge profit, but I did make a little bit of money. But right. yes, you if you have someone, in fact, for us, I know personally nothing about raising pigs. So, <laughs> But uh, my, my uh, fiance's grandparents have already been in it for years, and so I asked them if, if they would uh, get involved with me in the business, mm -hmm. and they said yes, and we partnered up for enough time to raise, I think we had nine pigs. Okay. So, and yeah, sold them off, made a little money. But yeah, we've, we've done that before and actually plan on doing it again, okay. hopefully this, this coming year. So. All right, and then you started to talk a little about what you're doing now. How did you start this? What, what made you um, think this is gonna be a, a good business model over here? What, what? <laughs> well, I, I wish I had thought it through better than I did, but if we're going to be perfectly honest, uh, my fiance kept telling me I needed to do it and I, I honestly never thought it would do anything but because she was so confident in it I said well you know let's give it a shot and it worked out far better than I believed or imagined it would so yeah. yeah. Well, did, she, did she kind of push you into this because you were making this at home and it was just yeah. like and, and, and every time uh, maybe you had someone come over they always right. said wow this is really great. She saw what other people were saying she knew that Anybody that tried it liked it, and then she just kept saying, you know, we can make money at this. Right. So. so this is Jimmy Dean's. Yeah, now, as, it, as close as you can get. Where does the name Jimmy Dean come from? Well, in the States, I, that's, for me, the best breakfast sausage you can have, Jimmy okay. Dean. They have, they yeah, have okay. different kinds. Uh, like me, I try to make a hot and a mild and, and model them both after that one, but that's where it comes yeah. from. I don't even know much about it, really. I mean, only what you told me. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's like a sausage, mm -hmm. 
and but you have your own little secret recipe, I guess. I certainly is. Yeah, yeah. Just from your well, it's like Colonel Sanders. I got <laughs> <laughs> I got my different herbs and spices, right. and I keep it in a lock vault. <laughs> right. right. It's just mace. Is, is it um, pork meats that you use? Yeah, yeah. I take I take now cayenne pepper and crushed red pepper, black pepper. Mm -hmm. I take uh, different spices and I bring them with me mm -hmm. to the market. Mm -hmm. And I pick out, I have a, a particular vendor that knows me, knows what I like, and I pick out the particular meat, the pork that I want, and I hand him those spices and he adds it in with it when it's being ground. So mm -hmm. it's mixing the spices in as well as being, yeah, at the same I time. I saw something they do that actually. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. I like that. And it works well. By the time he gives it back to me, I have two kilos ready to go. So All right. And then you'll just bring it back and I assume you, you keep it. Yeah. And you keep it in the freezer. And I, I do. Yes. I can show you later. So. Yeah. But it's doing very well in business. It's yeah. it's picking up. It's still, it's, it's uh, I've got a lot of repeat customers right. uh, now, which uh, that's the biggest part of it. And mm -hmm. getting more new customers every day. So, yeah. All right. Well, you know, kudos to you for, for being creative, coming up with a way. To, I mean, you tried a couple of th different things, but come up with ways to, to make some money out here. You know, I, I've had um, several people that want to move out here ask me, Christian, well, I want to come out now, but how am I going to survive? How am I going to make money? And, and they just have no idea, but there are ways. Sure. If you, if you put your mind, there are things you can do. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have learned that there are two basic ways. Either uh, there are a lot of expats in the community, so you make a, a nicer restaurant or a nicer uh, place to rent, and you deal with the expat crowd mostly only. My, my biscuits, for example, uh, I, I rely almost 100%. I do have some Filipino customers that absolutely love it, but yeah. my biggest market is to the expat. Mm. Now, I've also had a business at one time that catered mostly to Filipinos, so mm. you have to... You have to think of who you're selling to and, mm. and go at it with that route. So, so maybe at some point you can do both. <laughs> at some point, sure. Yeah, we had a cotton candy business at one time I've had in, a, in the mall. And yeah, that's been yeah, years that's ago. Right, that's yes, right. but and that actually did okay for a good while. So yeah. COVID shut that one down. No, so. exactly. And I'm going to be telling that. You know, yeah. when we met, we met actually, at the, did we meet at the gym the first time, right? We did. Yeah, we actually, and uh, we became friends and we actually started working out together for a few months. But right. I haven't done that in a while, but you moved to a different gym. And <laughs> well, we had a good team going for a while. We, we did. That, yeah. that, that was fun. But on the, on the biscuits, I, I, I tried one not so long, just uh, recently at one of our other friends' houses, and uh, it was delicious. Oh, well, thank it you. It really was, and uh, I, I am going to become a customer. <laughs> well, that, that recipe has been a long time in the making. So yeah. five years ago when I first decided that I wanted to have them, I had never made a from scratch biscuit mm. and you wouldn't have wanted the first one I ever made <laughs> so I little by little I have learned I have watched videos I have taken advice from bakers and people who know and same mm. thing with my sausage mm. recipe mm. Uh, it's changed over the years to become what it is to, right. but, but yeah it, it was a long time coming yeah. so are you are you confident now you've got this going are you confident you'll survive till your retirement and and even when you get retirement, I guess you'll still be able to run your little businesses and, and have extra income. But do you think you'll survive here? Now until the because I mean how, so how old are you now? You're like fifty five here. At fifty five and I'm yeah. sixty two is when so and, and I That's confident a is a very strong word. Uh, hopeful is hopeful. a is a better word. Right. So uh, yeah, I, I'm hopeful that I will make it. Well I'm I'm pretty confident that you will because I remember um, a year ago you weren't so confident. True enough, very true. <laughs> and so things are heading in the right Some direction. Some things are changing, yes. Yeah, so I, I think you're gonna, you're gonna make it. Yeah. All right, so you're keeping all your meat in the freezer. Absolutely. Let's see what you got in there. Biscuits come ready to bake, like this one. Pop it in, a, pop it in the oven, and about by the time you drink a cup of coffee, you're ready to go. Five minutes? Uh, 20. So, oh, 20 minutes. Yeah, well, make a okay. cup of coffee. <laughs> well, the time it takes to make and drink. Ah, we'll put it how about there that? And gravy is microwavable and good stuff. This is with bacon and my own sausage, and then our sausage, which is Gary's hot as well as Gary's mild GNRs. Right. Now, you, you sell these in those packages, and, and how many grams is that? 375 grams. 375 grams, and, and what do you charge for? 320 yeah. pesos for the That's one. That's pretty run. reasonable. Yeah. And how many sausages can you make out of that? 10, 11, depends on how thick you like them. Okay. 
Yeah. And then the um, biscuits are 12 biscuits for 200, 200. pesos. Yeah. Okay, so basically 500 pesos, and you've got yourself uh, a dozen. A dozen biscuits, biscuits and enough sausage, sausage to cover all of them. Yeah. And the gravy? The gravy is uh, 110 pesos and it's 12 ounces, so it'll cover about four biscuits, depending on how thick you like it. Well, think, think about it. I mean, that's going to, I mean, how many, how many breakfasts is that going to It's going to give you a week's worth of breakfast, isn't it? Yeah, two sausages, two biscuits every morning. You could go for a while. You go for almost almost a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a that's a pretty reasonable cost. <laughs> and it's and it's already all the hard work's done for you. Like I say, yeah. just put it in the oven and skillet yeah. fry. So yeah, and and it's good quality as well. It's good quality. I mean, thank you. Yeah. So oh. awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to getting my order in and having a, a nice sausage breakfast with biscuits. Okay, Gary, thank you so much for doing this video with me today and showing us your home and your, your business that you're doing now. If anybody is interested, anybody that's living out here mm -hmm. and they want to buy your biscuits, sure. how will they contact you? Ah, easy. I, I'm on Facebook under, under my name, Gary Harrington. You can search that or uh, text me, 910-916-127-5914. Uh, so either way, place an order. I'll reserve it for you. You can usually pick it up the same day and, or, or at least the next day. So please feel free. Ask a question. Just come by for a sample. So whatever yeah. you'd like. Exactly. And uh, I will put a link in the description below so that you have easy uh, access to your site and your contact information. So thanks again. God thank bless you. you. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Goodbye.